G'day, g'day. Welcome back to another episode here of Python Profiles. Welcome to Beaches Scaly Beasts, where I focus on the natural keeping of herptofauna and marine aquaria. So as you guys can see, I've got one of my favourite snakes out today. I shouldn't say favourites, they're all pretty damn good to me. But this is Atlas, my olive python. So Atlas here, he's still pretty young. I think he's coming in at a few years old now. Two, two years old or thereabouts. And he's, uh, he's probably pushing about five foot at the moment. He's not too big, but he's a nice slender long snake. And as you can see, he absolutely loves climbing. He's a little bit of a handful when he's out, but he's such a nice tempered snake. So olive pythons come from the top end up in the Northern Territory. I went to where there's plenty and I saw none. So that was a little bit of an unfortunate experience going up there and not seeing any of these awesome little guys or little, big, whatever you want to call them. But I've definitely been to that habitat and I've tried to replicate Atlas's native habitat or natural habitat as best as I can in his enclosure and uh, Hopefully Hopefully he likes it. I'm pretty certain he does But these guys are just absolutely fantastic snakes. They feel like velvet They get to a decent size. They can get up to around sort of like the three meter mark thereabouts They can get quite fat in captivity. That's one thing I'm trying my best not to do with this snake here but they can get up to anywhere up to about 15 kilo or thereabouts, which is a whole hell of snake. These snakes are sure inquisitive. As soon as they're out, they're always on the go. They just want to move around. And they're not the kind of snake that really sits still. Even when I see him on a daily basis, he's always in different parts of the enclosure throughout the day. Whether it just be, you know, thermoregulating left to right in the enclosure, or whether he's actually just sussing anything out there as well. He's such a cool little snake. It's one of those animals I've always dreamed of keeping. I'm so glad that I finally got one. He's such a cool animal. And he definitely grows pretty quick, considering he doesn't get fed a hell of a lot of food. I probably feed him about once a fortnight, maybe once every three weeks thereabouts. I give him a somewhat decent meal, but you know, I don't go over the top with him. And for those of you that don't know too much about Atlas, this little guy is a bit of a pain to feed. He doesn't like rodents at all. He hates rats whatsoever. And he does occasionally eat mice, but his most favorite, favorite item of food is definitely quails. He's an absolute sucker for quails. So I'm just glad that he's eating something, you know, and if it's quails, it's not the worst thing in the world. It just means I have to go out of my way a little bit to make sure that I get him a little bit of his own food for the freezer. All right, so that's enough of him wrapping me up here. Maybe we'll go and have a look at his enclosure and I'll uh, show you cru him cruising about in there. So here we go. Atlas is leading us into his enclosure. And as you can see, it's full of rocks. It's full of leaf litter. It's full of mulch, tons of grass. We've tried to make this look as natural as possible. I do have to give a special mention to Kylie today. Kylie's a volunteer that's coming over here and doing a little bit of cleaning here and there. Learning a little bit more about reptiles as she goes. And she's just helping out a little bit for her studying and her courses and stuff like that. So make sure that she's got some hands-on experience with these reptiles. So I have to give her a special mention because she's made this enclosure look fantastic for this video. So thank you heaps, Kylie. I really appreciate the help. A little bit hard to get a full view of Atlas's enclosure here, but the dimensions on it are 1.5 meters long, or 150 centimeters, by 77 centimeters deep front to back, and it's about 55 centimeters tall. It's a URS vivarium, it's their largest one available. It's a plastic molded um, vivarium, which means it's super durable, super lightweight, and one day it's going to be super easy to move when I do finally get my own place. The only thing that's not going to be easy to move is all of this rock structure. Because this is all very heavy, natural bush rock. 
that I got from a &L Landscapes up in Terry Hills, not too far from where I'm at. But you can't get much more natural than that. I think I spent about 65 bucks on the rocks that are here, about a square meter of it. And it looks almost identical to the kind of bush rock from the Northern Territory. I've tried to give it a bit of a natural layout. There's a few little crevices that he can get into. Of course, as he grows, I might have to alter it a little bit. But for now, it's going to be plenty for him. And one day I might have to upgrade the enclosure again. We'll just have to see how we go. So as far as heating up the enclosure, I've got a little thermostat probe down here somewhere. There we go. Buried under the rock there. Connected up to an on-off Havistat thermostat. And inside the dome, I'm actually using some of Ecotech spiral heat emitters. I'll hopefully pop up a little card or something in there or I'll put a uh, link in the description to the video on putting those guys into these enclosures. They're coming in really handy. The snakes are absolutely loving them. They're thriving in here. The grasses from here are actually some just from the um, out the front garden. I think they're called foxtail grass uh, or bush. Father-in-law was cutting a whole bunch of them down, so managed to score myself some awesome looking natural decorations. So unfortunately Atlas didn't want to come back out of his enclosure. He got into one of those little rock crevices and uh, I didn't want to disturb him too much. He was already nice and comfortable, so I won't be able to get him out for the ending of the video. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this short little python profile. It's a little bit of an update on my olive python atlas. What can I say? Super popular animals. You know, plenty of people in herpetoculture absolutely love them. They are gorgeous, gorgeous snakes to look at and pretty well tempered for most, most of them. I uh, won't speak for all of them. But in my case, Atlas is an absolute dream to work with and I love getting him out and I love handling him. He's definitely probably my go-to animal if I want to get an animal out and give him a bit of a play or show somebody an animal. He's, uh, he's a great snake to get out. So thanks so much for joining me in this video, guys. Make sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe if you can too. I'd really appreciate that. That's the best way to support the channel. If you did want to go the extra mile and support us a little bit further here, go and check out Teespring. The link will be in the description below. And also go and check out Patreon as well if you really, really, really want to support the channel, which I do very much appreciate. Uh, and put a small donation in over on there too. I'd be absolutely stoked if you did that. Thanks so much for joining me again on another video guys and make sure to stay tuned because I'll catch you on the next one.